everybody, welcome to Kicktastic Cakes. It's Jen, and if you can tell from this real quick little intro here, I'm gonna be showing you how to make a poppy playtime cake featuring Kissy Missy and Huggy Wuggy, as well as lots of other decorations. So follow along and see how to make this cake yours. All right, to begin my cake, I'm gonna show you how I made the railings first. I made that little fence railing. I took some gum paste, and I am using gum paste. You could use fondant if you wanted to. You would have to add some CMC powder or Tylos powder to it in order to make it stiffen up, but you certainly could do it. I rolled it out nice and thin, and then I just took some water, spread it on top of my gum paste, and then rolled a lollipop stick into it. I'm just pinching off the excess on the one end, and I took another lollipop stick and just pressed down on it to really try to make it as tight as possible so I don't have a big fat railing. I didn't want a giant one, so yes, there you go. I wrapped it up, pinched off the ends, roll it smooth. If you have to seal it with a little bit more water, do that too. And then let it dry. And I am I made ended up making a bunch of them because I wasn't sure how much railing I was going to need. But in the final cake, I only ended up needing three of them. I also would need four little cross beams for each section of fence. Like if you're going to make a bigger cake, then you could probably use more fencing. But I ended up cutting up a lollipop stick into sections of three and then just did the same thing, rolled them out, wrapped them up, you know, sealed them off, cut off the extra, whatever, you know, make it nice and neat. When they had set up just a little bit, I added some water to the cross beams there, laid them on my three, and then just took my fondant paddle and pressed down to seal it all together, and then carefully slid it onto a piece of paper to let it dry. And that thing needs to be dry and really set or it will not work. Okay, I did not let it set fully the first time I tried to put it together and it broke and it made me say bad words. All right, this is my little mesh floor, I guess you could say, for the catwalk. You know, and um, if you're familiar with the game, the end when you gotta kill Huggy Wuggy, basically make him fall. You gotta break the catwalk thing. So I made some catwalk. I just took some more of the gum paste, rolled it out really thin, cut out some really long stripes, cut out some really short stripes, hatched it across, just added water to each of my little cross beams let it dry on another piece of paper. You could use paper towels if you want, but I ran out, <laughs> so that's why I'm using paper. Now this is a little bit thicker piece of gray. I used those um, wooden sticks there that I'm putting marks with to measure how thick it is. I put a bunch of horizontal lines as you saw, and this is going to become my background wall for the entrance to um, Poppy's little vault, I guess you'd say it is. So it's got like a brick, gray brick background with a big poppy flower painted on it. So that's what I'm working with here. I'm going to, as you can see, have it kind of jaggedy in different shapes. It's a solid wall, but for my cake, obviously, I'm not going to do that. So I took a little bit of roughness out of it. I didn't mind it being, um, you know, uneven or asymmetrical. That's fine, as long as I have my bricks in there and I've roughed up some of the edges just to make it look a little more corroded I guess and more of an abandoned toy factory yeah that's what I did now I'm using my veining tool to put some lines in it to make it look more like brickwork which I think is just you know the most clever thing I've ever done in my life sorry children and then I rolled out some red gum paste really nice and thin very very thin actually like paper thin as thin as I could do it and I just freehanded a four petaled flower as long as it's rough and wiggly and looks like a flower, it's good. It was a little bit too thin between the petals, so I just mushed it to make it a little fatter. And as you can see, when I put it onto there, I had to re-mush it to make it work again because it just spread out a little too much. And I wanted it to be really thin too because, again, I wanted it to look like it was painted onto the brickwork. So I am pressing it down and I'm re-going um, over those lines where my bricks are to, again, give it the impression that it's part of the bricks it's not just sitting on top of the bricks if you know what I mean and I gotta say I think it looked pretty cool I was really happy with this part I have some black gel food coloring there a little bit of water in my little water dish I have a paintbrush and I'm going to just paint the um, center of the flower and the details now of the flower onto it it has I mean if you google it you'll see pictures it's very dark in the center kind of has like little ring little ringlets around the center Typically has three lines coming out for each petal, and each petal is outlined in black. It's got some more shading and um, grades of gray, and or not gray, black and dark red in it that I didn't get too far into. 
So this is what I did, and I still think it looks pretty darn cool. I just outlined everything, like I said. I have the three lines. I have the center nice and dark. I put a little, little bit of roughness into the other petals, and I add a little bit of water to kind of um, spread out the darkness a bit more, kind of blend it a bit more. And yeah, and then it needed just a little bit more darkness in the center, a little more blending, so I went over it again. It's actually a very dark picture. Like, there's not a whole lot of bright red showing, so if you do look at it, just kind of keep it in mind. It's not a bright, cheery picture. All right, the door in the center of the flower is just a red door outlined in some yellow, so that's just what I did. Just rolled them out nice and thin and stacked them on top of each other. The door has a little circle with a line on it, so I just have some circle cutters. Put a little little sliver of my yellow gum paste on there for our door handle as well. Called it good. You know, you could go into more detail if you want. I did not want, so that's where I ended up stopping. Stick it in the center of your flower, and there you go. Pretty cool, right? Okay, now for some more little final details on the wall there. Um, there's a lot of graffiti on the wall. I just went with four of the words. They're all the same thing. Danger, stay out, run, go away, go back stop, no, that kind of stuff. So I took the easiest words to make <laughs> and I put those on my flower. Um, they are written in yellow lettering and like a dark red, red lettering. So even though I have, you could very easily see the run and go back, I have no and stop on there too, but the red on top of the red hides a little bit, but it, it is there, you can trust me. As far as the side of the cake itself, I was not sure what I wanted to do since there's only the one chapter out. Maybe the second one's coming out soon if it hasn't already. But um, I decided to just draw hand draw a couple characters styled like the posters in the video game. So I decided to do the candy cat with the really long tongue coming out and Bron the Brontosaurus. So I just cut out two big white pieces of gum paste, you know, made them about playing card size, I'd say. And just using my edible food coloring markers, I freehanded the characters. It ain't the best. <laughs> it's not the worst. If you wanted to do something different on the sides, you certainly could. This is just what I did, and so they're not that good, so I'm not going to bother going into great detail over it. But yes, I just used food coloring markers, drew out a couple characters as best I could, colored them in, and yes, called them my posters. So when you're happy with them, put them aside and I'll show you how to do the main attractions. To begin my kissy missy, I'm gonna be using gum paste and I'm gonna start by making her body. I start with basically, you know, kind of rounded off square is really what it is, maybe a little bit more of a longer rectangle. But when I'm putting it through my lollipop stick, you see I've got it going at an angle. I'm not gonna have my kissy missy just sitting on top of the cake, kind of like Huggy Wuggy was. If you wanna check out that video, I will provide the link up top. But anyway, um, she is going to be more climbing onto the cake because the whole idea is these things are chasing you, gonna get you, gotta run away, and they're all spindly and noodly armed and legged, and, and yeah, so that was more, I was going more for the action pose on this one. So I rolled out some more pink gum paste, really long right there, there goes my little Roomba, and I uh, cut the two ends off rounded them off a little bit, kind of cupped them out, and now I'm using scissors, as you can see, to go over the whole body. I'm going to do the whole thing, just little snip, snip, snips, in order to try to get more of the furry, fuzzy look that Kissy Missy and Huggy Wuggy both have. Now to attach the legs, I flatten the one end, put a little bit of water on it, and I'm just tucking the one end under the body on the side, and the other side of the leg I'm just kind of wrapping around. Now the second leg I'm going to have going over the side of the cake. So again, just flatten the one end, put some water on it, plop it under there. And then uh, basically I'm going to get a nice arch on it. But for now, <laughs> now for now I'm just going to do the arms. The arms are going to be just like the legs. I'm going to roll it out, try to get an even thickness out of it, except at the end where I do want it to flare out. Huggy Wuggy and Kissy Missy both kind of have bell-bottom arms or uh, boot cut arms if you want, if you were from the 90s. So that's what I'm doing. So more like a big old suction cup kind of coming off in the end. And again, with the little pair of scissors, just snip, snip, snip. And when you do do your snips, make sure to really go heavily around the edge where the hands and feet are gonna connect because you don't want it smooth all of a sudden there. Now I'm just gonna put the arms to the side for just a few moments because I'm not quite ready to attach them yet. I wanna make the hands first, but that's basically the idea of where it's gonna go. Okay, for the arms and the feet, you're going to do the same thing. You're going to make mittens. 
So I cut a little triangle out to separate the thumb. I put two impressions for the fingers, just round off the tip of the thumb, the one corner that you cut. I pinched upward a little bit because those little cups, you know, the little hollows that I made at the, t at the uh, bottom of the legs, that's going to plug right on in there like that. You see how it all just comes together so nicely? It's like I did it on purpose. Same thing now for the other hands and feet. I'm uh, going to make more little mittens, cut out the thumbs, round it off, have your little impressions in it. I pinch up a little bit so I can tuck it into the foot. And after I tuck it in, because this one is going to be kind of to the side, this is where I was saying I kind of let it um, curve out a bit. It doesn't want to stay very nicely, so I put a little piece of paper towel just to hold its shape. Now I get asked this a lot if you can use gum paste, if you have to use gum paste, or if you, you can use fondant. And for this, you certainly could use fondant, but you would have to mix it with some Tylos or CMC powder. The arms and legs are thin and long. I have no idea how fondant would ever hold well enough up in the air like that. I feel like it would end up all droopy. So if you add some CMC or Tylos powder, it's called both, to your fondant, you could do it. All right, now I got the arms in place, the hands in place. I posed them how I wanted them. Now I'm making the head. Basically, a sloppy heart is going to be the head. Uh, I'm just putting it on a lollipop stick so it'll be nice and easy to put onto the body when I'm ready. I'm using the small end of my tool there to, to just kind of hollow out a little bit of a well for her mouth. I made a really big mouth on Huggy Wuggy, so I didn't want to do the exact same thing. I'm trying to do it, you know, a little bit different. Otherwise, it's just a pink version of Huggy Wuggy. So anyway, I put a little bit of a mouth there, filled it in with a little bit of black again, keeping it nice and recessed so that it doesn't pooch forward or anything like that. I have some white gum paste that I rolled out really, really thin, and I'm cutting out skinny, skinny little triangles. You see, they're kind of tiny and very skinny, um, very needle-like. You know, you don't want big teeth in these guys. You want lots of teeth, and you don't want them all the same size either. They're not nice, neat teeth. They are, they are orthodontic teeth. <laughs> so I'm filling in the mouth now with all my little shards of teeth. Now that I'm happy with my teeth, I'm going to outline it with the big red lips because Kissy Missy has a nice set of lips on her. So I rolled out some red. You know, you can see it's pretty thin. I made a little bit of a triangle, a little bit of a peak there in the center. And now I'm just outlining the mouth. I put water around the mouth already. You don't need to see me do that a million times. And I'm just outlining it, making sure to kind of pinch off the corners up at, at the top of each corner, the one peak in the center. And I'm going to connect it as best I can in the middle and the bottom so you don't see too much of a seam. All right, mouth is done. Check, check. Now I'm going to move on to the eyes. I just hollowed out a couple little grooves right inside of either side of that center peak of the lips. Put a white ball of gum paste in each one and then a little black ball on top of that and the black, make sure it fills up most of the white, but not quite all of it, but a lot of it. They have very blown pupils, these two. So yes, make sure you got lots of black in there. She also has two little eyelashes. And again, this is a character that's not, I don't think it's been released. It's coming out soon. So I'm going off of, you know, the posters in the video game, leaked artwork, fan, fan art concepts, that kind of thing. So if I'm a little bit wrong here, forgive me. <laughs> I'm, I'm doing my best to guess here. And so I'm adding two big eyelashes to her, one on each, or two on each eye, kind of to the center and kind of to the side, but they go more up, okay? They don't go up to the side like, you know, the, the quintessential unicorn eyes. Now again with the scissors, snipping all over her head, make her nice and fuzzy. Now I've got that hole there already. I had trimmed off my lollipop stick on her body plop it right down. It fits nicely. The limbs have had time to set, so now she's like in action mode for real, and she's not going to fall apart on me. See, it's kind of cool, right? Not too shabby. But we got to add one last little thing to her. She needs her little bow tie. And so I rolled out some blue, nice and thin, cut out some long, thin strips. I'm wrapping one around her neck. I don't know if you can see the one around her neck in the actual video game. I forgot. Um, video game or not but I'm going with it that you can because she is very similar to Huggy Wuggy. So again just two big loops for her bow. I didn't see strings on her hanging down so I didn't add them. If it turns out you need them you know just make another long skinny piece and add it. 
a little center piece in the middle there to hide all my seams where they all come together. Now I'm using fondant. Normally I, I use gum paste, but I decided to use fondant this time and I treated it all with CMC powder so it got nice and stiff, or nice and firmer anyway. And yeah, so this is what I'm doing. I made a shape out of his body, for his body, kind of like a square, as you can see, a rounded square that I ran through with a lollipop stick and stuck it in a piece of styrofoam that's going to become his torso. His arms and legs are super long and very thin, so I rolled out some blue. I rolled it really long, and if you're going to measure it out, his legs and his arms are about two and a half times the size of his body. So if you have that kind of ratio going, proportionally, he should look pretty good. Now I'll do it again for you here. I had made the leg, got the right length. I pressed down on the one end, add a little bit of water, and then slip that little flattened part underneath the body to make it sit. And when you do place his legs, make sure you place them to the outside of the body so he has um, quite the thigh gap going, if you know what I mean. All right, his arms are pretty much the same as his legs, except he's got a little flare around the cuffs or around his wrists. So I use my ball tool to just kind of cup the end of it to make it a little bit wider, but otherwise it's the same as the legs. Press the one end down, add a little bit of water to it, connect it right at the top on top of the shoulders, do it for both arms, and you've got arms. Now I'm using a little pair of scissors that I have. I think these are sewing scissors actually that I stick in my toolbox. And I'm just snip, 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 snipping all over the body to try to replicate his shaggy fur. If you guys have a better way of doing this, I would love to hear it. I, this is just what I tried to do. And I think it works pretty well. It's not the best, but it certainly does give a fuzzy effect or at least a furry effect. Or maybe more like a, <laughs> a cactusy effect. But yeah, if you guys know a better way, I'd, I really would love to hear it. So leave it in the comments below for me so I can always improve too. So yeah, I just do the scissors, go over his arms, go over his legs, go over his body. I'm going to try to pay careful attention to the joints. So where the shoulders come together with the arms as well as the legs and the hips. Make sure around his little wrist cuffs, you know, you get a good fluff going. And that's what I did. That's, that's what I did. Okay, now I trimmed off some of the extra lollipop stick and I'm going to do his head now. And as long as his head is about the same size as his torso, it should look good. It's kind of triangular, so you know, I got the two little points going at the top on either end. And I'm using my ball tool here to create the outline for his mouth. I'm going to have his mouth open so you can see his lovely teeth. And I started with the smile going across the bottom. And then in the center it goes up a little high and then down and loops around to the sides again, almost like a cat's mouth, you know, if you want to imagine that, like a cat or a dog smile. That's what I'm doing. I'm indenting all of it so it's all recessed and we'll fill it in. I make two little holes for his eyes and his eyes are not real big and they kind of sit down inside the niche where his mouth isn't. So just be careful of the placement. I'm adding a little bit of black fondant here into the mouth and I'm using my ball tool again just pressing it all down in there to kind of fill it in and flatten it, make it look a little bit better. Now I'm going to add some of his fur to his head. As I realize as I'm doing this, his fur is getting, or his head is getting more and more stiff. It's kind of setting up. So I snipped all over, make him fuzzy. Then I take some red, roll it out really long, really thin. I actually mixed it with a little bit of brown, so it's not bright, bright red. It's more of a dull red. And then I'm going to outline the mouth in water. That was what I just did there and then go all around with my nice big round lips and I he kind of reminds me of a Muppet <laughs> or a puppet like this but that's what he looks like so that's what I'm doing. I'm going to cut off the extra at the bottom and then add a little bit of water to put the pieces together and I'm going to use that tool to kind of blend the seam so you don't see it quite as much. Now his eyes I'm going to fill in with some white balls of fondant press them down kind of flat and then add two little black balls and when you add the black it does take up most of the white but make sure you can see a nice white crescent all around it okay so don't like fill in half of the eye with white and half with black make sure there's a crescent there a little highlight in each eye and then we're going to add the teeth and the teeth are going to be super easy they're going to be like every you know childhood play-doh-y or card, card construction paper type craft you've ever made teeth 
I rolled out my white nice and thin and I'm just cutting out little triangle slices like little pizza pieces of pizza or something like that. I cut a whole bunch of them. I cut them in different sizes, uh, slightly different shapes, but overall very long and thin. Um, his teeth are not symmetrical. They're not uniform. They're, some are big, some are small, some are long, some are short. Kind of doesn't matter where it is. They're just all jaggedy and sharky, really. So I'm putting some of the longer ones where I have room, some of the shorter pieces up in the corners, and it's not even in any way. And that's it. You just slide the head on. There you go. Okay. A few more little details. We're going to add his hands and feet. I took this kind of a yellowy lime green sort of color. And you're basically, again, I'm going to reference Muppets, going to make like Muppet hands for him. Just kind of like mittens or mitten paws, kind of. I cut a wedge out for the thumb. I made a couple imprints in order to give him kind of the idea of fingers on his little mitteny hand part. So again, I separated the thumb out. A couple little imprints going to pinch off the one end a little bit so I can slide it up into the groove that I made where the wrist gets all fluffy and wide. Do the same thing with the feet. He's got Muppet feet. And there you go. One last thing for Huggy Wuggy here. We're going to give him his little bow tie around his neck. So I rolled out some of the same colored blue, really long and thin, and I'm not going to do anything with it. I'm just going to wrap some of it around his neck. I'm going to hold it in place with a little bit of water. Going to wrap it around, trip off the extra there. Not too worried about that little tag hanging because it's going to get covered. I'm going to take that same piece, just make a couple little loops right there on my countertop. I'm going to put those in place with a little bit of water also. Just press it and make sure your loop stays nice and loopy. Same thing on the other side there so that you got two little loops connected in the middle. I'm going to add a little piece right there to hide the seam between the two bows. And two long straight pieces, uh, again, on either side of that little fake knot you got there. And that's it. Okay, now while they're setting up and drying, just leave them, let them set. I'm going to cover my cake. I just use some dark kind of midnight bluish um, fondant. This is a 9-inch cake. It's about 4 inches tall, I would say. Uh, I have a couple little marks there where I was marking where my characters are going to sit. In order to set it up, I put two lollipop sticks in the back of the cake to hold the wall. A little bit of water for my posters there. We'll stick them onto the front of the cake on either side. Now I'm going to take my little catwalk, place it right up against the door. Uh, my Huggy Wuggy's leg fell off, but that's okay. A little bit of propping and it sits right there. And so did Kissy Missy's leg, so I've got her propped in the back. And I have my piece of fencing, and there you go. You got your Poppy Playtime cake featuring Huggy Wuggy, Kissy Missy, the Poppy Vault, the Catwalk. Like, what more do you need, right? So I hope you found this video helpful. Please like and subscribe, because it really does help me out as well. I've got a lot of other videos out there, so feel free to take a look around. And as always, thank you for watching Cake Tastic Cakes.